Thanks to Manscaped for sponsoring today's video. As someone who has been creating YouTube videos about electric vehicles and Tesla for over five years now, I've received thousands of comments, and some of those comments are just absolutely hilarious in terms of how completely false and inaccurate they are. Many people have grown up with and fallen in love with gasoline and loud engines, and there's nothing wrong with that. You can like what you like, but some of these people have a mission to spread false information about electric vehicles, maybe because they're scared of change or don't want to progress into the future, whatever it is. I'm here to clear up some of the lies that you may have been told about electric vehicles so we can put an end to the myths once and for all and bring about the truth of Tesla and EVs. Now, myth number one, an electric vehicle's battery needs to be replaced frequently or even eventually. Now, some people think an EV battery will die after five years or need to be replaced even sooner than that. And that's simply not the case. Yes, lithium ion batteries continuously degrade from the moment they are first used as a result of the fundamental chemistry of the battery, but the degradation is nowhere near as rapid or as drastic as some people may think, especially with today's battery technology. Now, Tesla's recent impact report shows that the capacity retention of Model S and Model X batteries are averaging around 90% after 200,000 miles of usage. That means a long range Model S purchased today that has over 400 miles of estimated range can be driven the annual average of 15,000 miles per year. And after 14 years, it would still have 360 miles of range. And maybe even more impressive, my Tesla Model 3 that I purchased three and a half years ago still has the same estimated range after driving 87,000 miles. I definitely do not need a battery replacement anytime soon. And even with a 10% degradation after 200,000 miles, I'd still have an estimated range of around 280 miles, which is more than enough, especially when there are more and more charging stations being installed, which means the less of a need for a longer range. And EV manufacturers are constantly striving to improve battery lifetimes. Tesla's new 4680 battery cell should provide five times the energy, six times the power, and 16% more range compared to the old battery cell. Plus, lithium ion battery costs have fallen by 98% in three decades, so even in the worst case scenario, if my Tesla battery did need to be replaced after 10 years, the cost will most likely be cheaper than it is today. And it's not like gas cars have major parts that last forever. Some of the most expensive gas car repairs include engine and cylinders from $7,000 to $10,000 and transmissions for $4,000 to $5,000, none of which are in an electric vehicle. I have complete confidence my EV battery will last the entire time I own the car. And that brings us to myth number two. Electric vehicles are worse for the environment because of the emissions from production and electricity and the leftover batteries destroy the planet. Now, this myth is probably brought on from the studies that have shown that the initial production of a typical electric vehicle can create more pollution than producing a gasoline car. Now, this is mainly because of the additional energy required to manufacture an EV's most critical component, the battery. But even so, over the lifetime of the vehicle, total greenhouse gas emissions associated with manufacturing, charging, and driving an EV are typically much lower than the total emissions associated with a gasoline car. That's because electric vehicles have zero tailpipe emissions and are typically responsible for significantly fewer emissions during operation. Tailpipe emissions are the greenhouse gas emissions a car produces when driving. The other type of emissions are called upstream emissions and are associated with the production and distribution of gasoline for internal combustion engine vehicles or electricity for EVs. Now, this includes activities like extraction, transport to a processing plant, and conversion of feedstock to motor fuel or electricity, and the distribution of the motor fuel or electricity. Now, some people claim that if an electric vehicle gets most of its energy from a fossil fuel power plant, then that's just as bad as driving a gas car. Not true. I'm a good example of this because I live in Kentucky and most of my electricity is derived from burning coal. However, fueleconomy.gov shows that owning a Tesla Model 3 in my zip code still produces much lower total greenhouse gas emissions compared to a gasoline vehicle. We can also see from Tesla's 2020 impact report that Tesla vehicles emissions per mile are significantly lower than internal combustion engine vehicles. Now, based on the global weighted average grid mix, a Tesla Model 3 has lower lifetime emissions than an equivalent ICE car after driving just 5,340 miles. And a key thing to remember is that the electricity grid is slowly but surely getting cleaner each year, which EVs can benefit from and result in lower lifetime emissions, while gas cars will always rely on dirty fossil fuels. But batteries do reach end of life, so where do they go? 
Well, the good news is Tesla claims that every battery used in R&D or returned from the field that cannot be remanufactured are recycled, and Tesla can recover about 92% of battery cell materials with its recycling process. Again, batteries can be recycled while fossil fuels cannot. Before we continue, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Manscaped, the best brand for men's grooming and hygiene. Their new Lawnmower 4.0 electric trimmer was a big hit, and now Manscaped offers a new Performance Package 4.0 bundle, which is an all in one kit that is essential for an effective men's regimen. Their new Lawnmower 4.0 is my all time favorite cordless trimmer because it's not only waterproof, which makes it easy to use in the shower, but it has replaceable ceramic blades featuring skin safe technology and a built in LED light, plus a new wireless charging system and a travel lock feature. The Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray has cooling aloe vera and anti inflammatory properties to stay fresh, and the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant Lotion absorbs quickly and dries clear for a long lasting protection. The new Performance Package 4.0 also includes their new Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer, which should be in every guy's hygiene routine. The full Performance Package 4.0 kit provides the best toolkit without breaking the bank, and you can even enroll in their Peak Hygiene Plan to get ongoing replenishments delivered straight to your door. For a limited time, you can also get two free Manscaped gifts, their Shed Travel Bag, and Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. Visit Manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free international shipping and two free gifts when you use promo code ANDYSLY at checkout. And that brings us to myth number three. Electric vehicles don't have enough range and take too long to charge. Did you know that it takes 10 hours for my Tesla Model 3 to charge from 0 to 100%? That makes it sound like I have to wait hours to charge when I'm traveling on a road trip, but that's definitely not the case. See, that is my home charging rate and all of my home charging happens overnight while I sleep. I wake up to a full charge each morning and after driving my daily commute, I still have over 50% of my battery left when I get home. I never have to take time out of my schedule to charge during my normal daily driving. And on road trips, Tesla supercharger stations are specially designed to charge at rates up to 30 times faster than my home charging. So when I'm traveling long distances, I usually only have to stop to charge for about 15 to 30 minutes each stop every two to three hours, which is about how long most people can drive before needing to use the bathroom, eat or stretch. But that's just for road trips. 85% of households travel under 100 miles on a typical day, and nearly all electric vehicles have more than sufficient range to cover a typical household's daily travel, which is only around 50 miles per day on average. Now, most EVs have at least 200 miles of range, so even when factoring in potential range loss due to cold weather, precipitation, incline, and fast speeds, a typical EV is enough for the average household. And with more and more DC fast charging stations coming online along all major highways for all EV models, there will be much less range anxiety that early EV adopters had to deal with in the beginning. And as the distance between chargers lessens, it means lower range EVs can be used to travel on road trips. According to the Alternative Fuels Data Center, there are currently over 43,000 level two and level three EV chargers in the US alone, and that number is continually growing. Now, I've personally felt like it's been more convenient to own an EV compared to a gas car just from the sole reason that I never have to stop during my daily driving, which is awesome. Now, myth number four, electric vehicles are unsafe and are a fire hazard. Now, this one is my favorite. The news and media love to show electric cars that are bursting in flames because fear provokes a conversation, especially in regards to the novelty of EVs. It's sort of like plane crashes. A plane crash is so unlikely that when it does actually happen, the news is quick to cover it. The reality is that internal combustion engine vehicles catch fire at a much higher rate when compared to electric vehicles. First of all, let's just point out the obvious, which is that Tesla vehicles have been identified by the national government as some of the safest vehicles ever, with the Model 3 scoring the lowest probability of injury by any vehicle ever tested. Tesla always strives to hit five-star safety ratings with all their vehicles, and let's not forget gas cars are called internal combustion engine vehicles. The word combustion is literally in the name. A Tesla's impact report states that fire incidents are about 11 times lower for Tesla vehicles than the average vehicle in the US. According to the latest available data, in 2019, there were almost 190,000 vehicle fires in the US alone, and data from the National Fire Protection Association and the US Department of Transportation show that in the US, there is one vehicle fire for every 19 million miles traveled. And from 2012 to 2020, there has been approximately one Tesla vehicle fire for every 205 million miles traveled. Clearly, Tesla has a much lower rate of fires per miles driven compared to the average car. 
And Tesla is also continually improving their battery chemistry, cell structure, battery pack structure, and vehicle passive safety in order to decrease fire risk to as close to zero as possible. And as Tesla and other manufacturers improve their vehicle technology, fires will be even less likely for EVs than they already are now. And myth number five, electric vehicles cost way more than a gasoline car and are only successful because government incentives. This one is big because cost is the most important factor when buying a car for the majority of people. And for the longest time, electric vehicles were usually more expensive than their gas counterparts. Uh, this, along with the urgency for people to adopt electric vehicles because of their environmental benefits, led to a bill being passed in the U.S. over 10 years ago that allowed people to be eligible for a federal tax credit of up to $7,500 when purchasing a qualifying electric vehicle. And now there's a possibility of the EV tax credit to be extended for possibly a longer time and a bigger credit, but prices have changed over the past decade, and now the average cost of a new car in the U.S. is over $40,000. Now, under the current tax credit rules, Tesla is no longer eligible and hasn't been for a while, yet they still are increasing their sales quarter after quarter. The standard range plus Model 3 comes in right at $40,000 without any tax credit, which is basically the average cost of a new car. And GM Chevy Bolt, which is also no longer eligible for the tax credit, comes in at just $31,000 for over 250 miles of range, which is a great deal. And there are many more affordable electric vehicles coming out soon that cost less than the average cost of a new car, including cars like the Nissan Aria, Hyundai Kona, Kia Niro, and even the single motor Cybertruck, all around $40,000 or under. So even without tax credits, electric vehicles are showing that they are in high demand and coming down in price. The tax incentives are great, but they won't be around forever and they don't need to be, but it's good that they are offered because it does incentivize and help people become EV owners more quickly, which is essential to improving the current state of our climate and environment. Now, did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments below. Please share this with people so they are more informed about EVs and Tesla. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to see more tech videos like this in the future. My name is Andy. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.